And it's really awesome. I'm really excited. So this is my my first time to speak underneath the name of Lifestyle Christianity. So the website's going to be lifestylechristianity.com. If anybody wants to go there, um, it, it's there's only a homepage there. It just has events on it right now, but it'll be up and developed. And I'm going to have teachings and all kinds of stuff on there. And videos to help to flip your boat. Because <laughs> I'm not interested in just getting you to come out of the water. I want to flip it and take it away. So, uh, <laughs> serious. It's like just asking you to come out of the water, you might decide not to. But if I flip it and take it, you don't have a choice. <laughs> I mean, it's good. It's important. Because God wants us to live by faith. He doesn't want us to walk by sight and live by sight. If you live by sight, sometimes you're like, well, I don't know if I should. But if your boat's gone, you have no choice. Come on. I went to the first one. It was amazing. Bill Johnson helped me to go there. Just awesome. I wasn't an imam. I'm not from Bethel, but their family. And Bill like paid for me to go and blessed and helped me go. It was just amazing. So I went there and then after the first school, I got asked to help at the rest of them. So I've done six of these schools of evangelism with Pastor Bucky and other amazing speakers that it's just baffling. So this year I have all kinds of events, schools that I'm doing next year, and then I do a bunch of, we did our first, I did my first fire conference in Slovakia with Daniel, and we spoke to, gosh, 6,000 meters, and then the nighttime sessions were like 9,000 meters in Slovakia. Yeah. That's just crazy, like Czech Republic and, and Czech, or Czechoslovakia split, so it's Slovakia. It was crazy, so this country that was totally wrapped up in the communism bondage thing for years and years and years and years and years, and then the wall went down, I think in 86, somewhere around then. Say that. It doesn't say, deny the devil, pick up your cross and follow Jesus. It says, deny your self. So selfishness and righteousness are opposites. And so sometimes, because I'm trying to get prayer from a speaker or because I want somebody to pray over me, I'm seeking that in an unhealthy way at the cost of truth that could set me free forever. Right. This is huge. See, I, 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 I've grown up in God. I was, I'm just going to share just a bit of my testimony so you know where I came out of. Um, out of here, forget it, God. You want me to die for them? They don't even appreciate me. There's no way I'm going out like this. I'm out of here. Yet yeah, we develop that attitude because we get offended and hurt by people. That's not okay. Come on. I'm here to make pastor's life easier. If we see who we are, every time we look in the mirror, you, this isn't a condemnation speech. This is freedom. This is the freedom of the blood of Jesus. If the Son sets you free, you'll be free. Indeed. So why would bondage come back in where freedom is? Because we lack the understanding of who we really are. It's all about identity. It's all about your identity. See, if I teach you how to pray for the sick, that's one thing. But if I teach you who you are, praying for the sick won't be your focal point. It'll be a byproduct of being son. Yeah. If I teach you how to prophesy, you can do it and you can live in a mere gifting. But I don't want you to ever walk in just a gifting. I, look, if you do walk in gifting, walk in this one. The free gift of of righteousness. The one that Romans says in Romans 5 that we're supposed to reign as a king in this life through the free gift of righteousness and the abundance of grace. And the abundance means the violently excessive amount of grace. Man! God's given us a violently excessive amount of grace to walk out the free gift of righteousness. Grace isn't some twisted weird thing that allows me to do whatever I want to do. Grace, Jesus, grace and truth came through Jesus. Jesus didn't want to do just whatever he wanted to do. Jesus did everything that God wanted him to do. And that same grace is on your life. You'll be able to walk and live and surrender your being and live selfless and live in righteousness and truth and walk in the reality of what it means to be a son of God as your father.
father or a God as God as your father. Then you don't have to look impressive through your gifting. You can be impressive because you believe in Jesus. Now listen, if I never got to pray for anybody ever again, I would still be okay because I'm right with God. But that's not going to happen. But if I didn't, that doesn't mean I'm a failure. And if you live in gifting, you're only as good as your last healing. If you live in gifting, you're only as good as your last prophetic word. And if you're only as good as your last prophetic word, you better give one and you're not good, then you're worse in gifted. And why would I want to do that? It's the love of God. It's the profuse love of God. The love of God compels me. I don't just walk into gifting because I wanted to speak a word over somebody. I'm compelled by the love of God because I want them to know the Father. I want them to know who God is as a father. When God came and fathered me, it didn't matter who fathered me when I grew up. When God came and fathered me, it didn't matter what my mom said about me when, I was, when she was pregnant. When God came and fathered me, it didn't matter that my mom didn't want me when I was born. I'm here because all life comes from God and God said yes. It doesn't matter if my mom and dad were ready for me. Man, people are ready usually for the kids to come. Kids come. They just come. But all life comes from God, but we've made it psychological instead of supernatural. And we've made it about we've got to get this out of you so that you cannot be rejected. There's it's so weird. Jesus was rejected so that we could be accepted. You can't reject me. I'm not kidding. I talk to Muslims and witches and Hindus. They can't reject you. can't reject me. Love never fails. It's impossible. Really. If I go to pray for somebody and they rebuke me, it doesn't mean anything except they don't know who they are. But if I get offended by what they should have known not to say, then I don't know who I am either. Come on, listen to me. Well, you don't understand. I got hurt by the church. Okay. Oh, well. Get over it. Come on, dude. I'm so tired of hearing that stuff. You get offended by because somebody in the church said something or did something that they shouldn't have. So all of a sudden, you carry that with you. Then all of a sudden, you look at people through the wrong lens, and if you say church, you got the memory of what you went through instead of what Jesus went through. He paid a dear price for his girl, for his bride. He died for her. And you don't have the right to look at the church in any way if you're not willing to lay down your life for her. And if you were laying down your life for her, you'd never say something about her. Come on! It's the truth! If I got attitude because somebody should have known better than to hurt me, if I got attitude with them, then that just means that I don't know who I am, so that I should have known better not to be hurt by something they should have known better not to do. <laughs> What's better? <laughs> don't try to take notes, it ain't gonna happen. <laughs> just get the CD. <laughs> is this is making any sense, but I, I travel all over the world. This is an epidemic. Yeah. Be offended. Yeah. Stop it. <laughs> Jesus was delivered up for our offenses. Yeah. And he was raised for our justification. It's one to one to God. Yeah. Boom! He knocked the devil once. He was delivered for our offenses. Then he was raised for our justification. And when I see that, oh, when I see that I've been justified, what does that mean? It's just as if I never ate the tree. Hey, man. Listen, redemption is different. Redemption isn't just being purchased. It would be great if that was it, but it's not just it. Redemption is being brought back to the original value that God created me to be in the beginning as if I never ate the tree. And I stand before God as if I never sinned. That's real grace right there, man. Real grace is that I stand before God righteous in His eyes. Not through self-righteousness, not through my own works, so I can justify that. Because that's self-righteousness. But through the works of Jesus, I live in His finished work. So that everything that I do is operating out of a place of being instead of doing. It's not about what I can do for God. It's what I do with God out of my place of being in God. It's awesome. There's no pressure. Yeah. Really, there's no pressure at all. It's so like awesome. <laughs> I'm, I'm free from me, which makes me free from you. <laughs> Serious. If I'm free from me, 
me, I can't be hurt by you. Yeah. We don't know what they did. Why would we elevate what something did over what Jesus did? Yeah. Yeah. Because we got attitude. Yeah. That just needs to shift and change. We need to look in the mirror and see who God created us to be. Because he created us in his image. And if you look in your Bible, in my Bible, in 1 John, 2 John, it says what God is. It says God is love. So if God created us in his image, why would I allow something in life to affect what he created me? Yeah. I'm telling you the truth that it's a lack of identity. Because we're sons and daughters of a king. A king that didn't just like open a car door for us. He died for us. He died. Love gives. Love just gave. He, God so loved the world that he gave. So that whoever would believe. What does believe mean? Believe means to be absolutely fully convinced beyond a shadow of a doubt. So let me ask you this. Believing in Jesus, is it just to believe that he paid a price for me to get to heaven? Is it just to believe that he paid a price for me to get to heaven and for heaven to get into me? Or did he pay a price for me to get to heaven, eventually being my destiny, my destination? Destroying hell would be my living. But the absence of thinking like hell would be my existence. Look, this is not unattainable. Dude, this is the reality of the gospel. This is the one that you said yes to. Without even knowing the full boat, this is what you said yes to. So the spirit of wisdom and revelation is on the earth to make us think like Jesus. It says God's thoughts are higher than mine. His ways are higher than God's. And in the Old Testament, it said that. But in the New Testament, it added it. it says, His thoughts are higher than my thoughts. It's in Corinthians. His ways are higher than my ways. But we have the mind. Now that doesn't mean that I'm God. That just means that God has embryonically planted in me the reality and the capacity to house and think like Jesus. What does being renewed in the spirit of your mind really mean? What is don't be conformed to the world? Let me just start with that. Romans 12, 2. First, let's hit Romans 12, 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, to offer your bodies to God, which is your reasonable service, and pleasing service to God. First one, as a living sacrifice. So as a living sacrifice, I say, God, here I am, my whole body, spirit, soul, and body, my everything that I am. First commandment, what is it? Love God with everything I am. So every part of me loves God. Romans 12, 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, I'm just bring a couple things together real quick. To offer my body to God as a living sacrifice. Everything holy and acceptable and pleasing and my reasonable service to God. The first man, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, your soul, your strength, your mind, your life, pretty much. Right? Romans 12, 2. And do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove the will of God. Or approve what is and what is not the will of God. The will of God is to not be offended. This solves so much more stuff than you think. People are like, just give me a word. I, I, won't, I don't prophesy in meetings too much because you lose everybody. You prophesy and people are like, give me a word too. And then all of a sudden, like, truth is out the door. Just give me a word. I'm not against prophecy. There is a foundation built in our hearts so that intimacy is the infrastructure and everything that we have. So that you can, man, what would it be like for you to sit at home, open your Bible, and God will speak to you? <laughs> I live for that, man. I live for that. I'm on a plane, I uh, open my Bible, or I listen to audio to, to the Word. Or I, I exercise for 45 minutes. I, I have the Word in my ears. It's constant. I, 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 I never let it get away from me. I constantly... It's everything. Because that word, even though we don't get it when it comes in, it goes in and it makes its home inside of you. 
and then it produces fruit that you don't even know is there. And all of a sudden your lips speak something you didn't even know was in there. And then when you, someone cuts you off in traffic, instead of getting an attitude and having a charismatic worship service for the wrong God, That's a good, good, good word right there. <laughs> people get upset about people raising their hands, yet they don't mind having a charismatic worship service with the wrong God. <laughs> so instead of that, all of a sudden it's words in you. Someone, someone rips you off, or someone cuts you off, and you bless them. And, you, and it's so weird, you didn't have to try to, it was automatic. Amen. Someone gives you attitude and you call a harsh word with a kind of love. That's the Bible. If people persecute you and you bless them. And you realize that when they do that to you, you're more blessed. So you're blessing out of the place that you're more blessed because you got persecuted. And you're persecuted for righteousness sake and it's awesome. And you feed on it. And the more it comes, the more it's amazing. I don't live just to get persecuted, but it says if I live godly, it happens. So it's going to happen. It's a promise from the Father. <laughs> we want everyone to be fulfilled by that one, man. It is. All those who desire to live godly will suffer persecution. So, so what if somebody snaps at me? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Doesn't matter, is it true? Give it. I'm not talking about condemning. I'm talking about speaking the truth in love. In love. So someone cuts me off. I'll just give a perfect example. I have three daughters, 17, 7, and 2. Awesome, all girls, not less. I am. Amazing. You know what I'm saying? You got four, right? Four girls. You're more blessed. <laughs> so I'm sitting in the car beside my daughter. Somebody cuts me off. Right in front of me. It just happens, man. It's life. It happens. It's okay. Get, get in. And then, and then, we pull up right beside me. Because we go to the next life. So they look at me like I want to fight. Because that's what people do. <laughs> so my daughter's in the pastures. And I have a rage rageaholic guy. It's very exciting. He might be a Christian. I don't know. I'm being serious. I'm being serious. I'm being serious. <laughs> but in all seriousness, there ought to be a difference between you. Because that's being conformed to the world. That's not being transformed. But what good is my transformation if I reach back? So I hold out the window. <laughs> my daughter. <laughs> hey. I say, hey, what? <laughs> so I just want to tell you, man, that I don't know what I did, but I'm really sorry. I'm tell you that Jesus loves you so much that you're amazing. <laughs> Then shut the plank up. I said, I would, but I can't. I would, but I can't. Serious. And then it goes to this. I mean, I told you to shut up. Listen, man, you have a pain in your right shoulder right now. And Jesus wants to heal you. No matter how angry you are, it doesn't matter. God loves you so much. Man, what the blank is wrong with you, man? So if the mic's long enough, I can tell him. <laughs> well, regardless, I'm going to pray for him that Jesus is going to heal him. Because I don't need him to be calm, cool, collective, or in faith for Jesus to touch him. <laughs> this is real. And pray for him, and Jesus heals him. Man, what the, what the, what the black is wrong with you, man? What'd you do, man? God loves you so much, man. Bless you. I call that a drive-by. But if you don't allow offense to permeate your heart, you can never have that encounter. 
And he might be a Christian. And, and, and all funniness aside, he might not know Jesus unless he sees it in me. 